Tamam. Tamam. Şişt kalın. Good morning everyone. How's everyone doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Uh, welcome to the Cisco Youth Theater Sessions. My name is Akila. Um, I'm a software engineer here in Learning and Certifications. Um, I'm actually a fairly recent employee of Cisco. Um, I got hired in 2021 uh, as an intern um, halfway through my master's. Um, and then I got hired as a full-time employee last year and in August. So it hasn't even been like a full year since I've become like a full-time employee of Cisco. But the journey has been incredible so far. Um, it's my first Cisco Live ever. Um, it's my first presentation ever here. So bear with my nerves a bit. Uh, so I did my master's in business analytics uh, with a data analytics concentration. Um, and over the course of the two years, uh, we were introduced to a lot of tools uh, for data analysis, visualizations, machine learning. Um, but there was one tool that every professor uh, made us use, which was Jupyter Notebook. Um, we were kind of heavily dependent on it um, during my master's. And then um, when I came to Cisco, I was introduced to the world of networking. Um, I joined the infrastructure team. So everybody here was all about using Python for network automation. They're saying Ansible, Terraform, all different kinds of tools. But nobody was saying Jupyter Notebook. So um, naturally, I thought I could throw this notebook away. I, don't, I will never have a use case for it anymore. I will never use it anymore. But then I realized um, everybody works with data. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of an engineer you are, you will work with those Excel or CSV files. And there's always going to be a use case or there's always going to be um, like a business question that needs to be answered using that data. So I thought I'll introduce you guys to this notebook, um, which is called Jupyter Notebook. Um, which might come of use to anybody over here, any engineer over here um, that um, might want to make something out of their data or might want to draw some insights or just want to learn a new tool from a recent college grad. So hence my session, Jupyter no uh, Interactive Python with Jupyter Notebook. Let's get started. That brings us to the agenda today. Firstly, I'll introduce you guys to Jupyter Notebook. I'll tell you a little bit about, a little bit about what it is. I'll tell you how to install it and how you can use it. It's a very simple process. Netbox. Um, this might seem a little off topic over here, but it's actually not. Uh, because for my demo, which is next up in line, I wanted to choose a very simple data set that everybody here can relate to. Um, so I wanted to choose a, choose a device inventory data set. And thanks to Hank, uh, I don't know where Hank is, but thanks to Hank that I've been introduced to Netbox and we've been using it lately uh, for our device inventory management. So I'd like to introduce Netbox a little bit before I go into my demo. Um, and then I'll end it with what's next in it for you guys. And any questions, I'll be happy to take any questions you guys might have. So let's get started. So what is this notebook that's named after a planet? Uh, has anyone ever heard about it before? Wow. Has anyone ever used it before? Oh, wow. All the hands should go up after this session. Uh, so it is an interactive Python tool, right? So now what does it mean to be interactive? Anyone? OK, I'll take it myself. Uh, so when you put in a line of code or when you put in a line of command, the results should execute immediately. You should see the results uh, immediately. Just like a CLI, right? I'm sure everybody here, if not most of you here, should be familiar with CLI. So Jupyter Notebook gives you a CLI-like experience for Python because it runs code line by line. Um, and it also uses, or it also opens up in a web interface. So you don't have to install a separate application or an external application um, to run this notebook. Um, it just opens up in your local browser. And it's a very simple installation process, which you'll see next. So use cases for engineers. Um, obviously, um, the most popular um, use cases for Jupyter Notebook are for uh, data analysis and visualizations. But there's one um, underrated use cases that I'd like to bring up today, which is live demonstrations. So for example, if you want to demo something to your team really quickly, um, you don't want to use like PowerPoint. You don't want to juggle between two things. And if you want to show them live code, you don't want to juggle between different applications. Um, so this tool, you can have all your headings. You can have your subheadings. You can have your text. You can have your images. And you can have live code underneath explaining what it means. So you can, you can talk to your team. You can expl explain to them while running the code with them. So I think this is an underrated use cases uh, use case which I wanted to bring up today. 
So next up is installation. Um, this is a very simple installation process. It's probably the simplest tool I've ever installed in my life. Um, the only prerequisite here is you need Python installed on your system. Um, after you have Python installed, step one is actually optional. Um, you just have to make sure that pip is upgraded. Um, I'd highly recommend it um, just to avoid any dependency issues. But the actual command to install it is step number two, which is pip install pip3 or pip install Jupyter Notebook. And you should have it up and running. That's literally the only command you need to install. And the way to open it is you open up a terminal and you type in Jupyter Space Notebook and it should be up. That's it, it's very simple. Netbox. Um, so before we go into our demo, I'd like to introduce Netbox a little bit. Um, thanks to Hank, we've been using it a lot lately. Uh, so as I mentioned, I am new to network engineering, pretty new, but I do have a, a data analysis and a data management background. And one of the things that our team has been focusing on recently is getting the data together for a net, net, uh, network infrastructure um, in a way that it's easier for both the teams that are, for both the people that are involved and the automation tools to know things like um, what IP addresses are free and available, um, what IP addresses are already being used, um, and just accurate information about um, the devices that are already deployed in the network. So to do this, we've embraced this open source tool called Netbox. Um, we're using Netbox for all of our IP address management and our device inventory management. Um, it also acts as a so source of truth and it powers network automation. So for my, for my demo today, I have um, exported a CSV file from Netbox. So next up is my demo. So let me go into my demo. So this is the terminal. Let me blow it up a bit, a little bit so you guys can see. OK, so I already have it installed, so all I have to do is just open it. So I just type in Jupyter Space Notebook, and it should open up a browser. So it accesses all your local files. And the way to create a new file is you do new, and then you open up a Python 3 file. But I already have my demo here, so I'm just going to open that up. Um, I'm going to clear the output because I'm going to run it in front of you guys now. So um, for our demo today, we're going to be using um, a Netbox data. I, as I mentioned, I wanted to use like a simple device inventory data set. So here you have your headings, you have your text, you have your um, code. So this is what I meant when I said um, live demonstration. So uh, for our demo today, we're going to be leveraging a very popular uh, library called Pandas. It's used extensively for data analysis. Uh, some of its features include indexing, grouping. We'll see some of it today in our demo. So the first thing we do is we obviously pip install. We install the package. We install the library. I already have this installed because I have it tested. So when I run this, it's going to say requirement already satisfied. But for you guys, if you're doing it for the first time, it should say installing, and it should get you. Um, the next step is you import the library into your notebook. And when you run it, um, it gives you a number on the left. So you know that you already have that loaded into the notebook. So we got pandas loaded now. First thing we do is we read the CSV file into their notebook. And the way to do that is you do pd.read underscore CSV and you give the path to your CSV file. Well, let's run this. So when pandas is reading a CSV file, it converts it into a data structure called a data frame. Um, a data frame is a two-dimensional data structure with just rows and columns. So if you want to see what it looks like, we would just say DF and we run it. It's just like your CSV or your, your Excel file. You have your columns and you have your rows. So a little bit about the data set. As I said, this is a device inventory data set. So it has the name of the device, the status, the tenant, the site, location, rack, role if it's, uh, if it's a router, if it's a switch, the manufacturer of the device, the type of device it is. Now, this is a dummy data set. Obviously, I'm not going to use, use real data here. So you see a lot of empty values over here. But I tried to work with what we have. Uh, so let's get started. We have a couple of questions that we're going to answer. So the first one is, how many total rows and columns? So in case you missed this, we have another command that gives us the total rows and columns, which is df.shape. And if you run this, it should give you a tuple um, with total rows and columns. So the next question is, um, what is the total count of each device row? So if you want to know how many routers are there, how many switches are there, how many patch panels are there in your uh, data set, 
The way you do that is you do DF and then you access it with square brackets and you in single quotes, you access the column and you have a function called value counts and value counts uh, basically counts each unique value of, of, um, of an occurrence in each row. So if you run this, it'll give you a nice table with all with the number of devices or number of uh, type, type of roles that, are, that exist in the data set. Next up is Boolean indexing. So I personally feel that um, Boolean indexing is helpful if you have numerical data, if you wanna set something greater or greater than or equal to a number, um, this is really helpful. But um, as I said, this is dummy data. I didn't have many, I didn't have uh, much numerical data to work with. So, but I did work with what I have. Um, so let's look at some Boolean indexing. First thing is, um, if we wanna display a table with only routers, um, you access the data frame, just like we did earlier, you set it equal, equal to whatever the value that you wanna see. In this case, we want it to be router and you run it. Now you might be wondering why we have an extra DF wrapped around the whole um, code. Um, does anybody wants to, anybody wants to take a guess what happens if I run without the DF that's wrapped around? Anyone, Mark? So it's a Boolean, right? So a Boolean only has two values. It's either true or it's either false. So if you run it without the, an, uh, another DF wrapped around, it's just gonna give you, it's just gonna go through each row and it's gonna, it's just gonna give you if it's a true or if it's a false. But we don't want that, we wanted a table, right? That's why you want, we wanted a data frame. So you wrap it around another data frame again. And uh, if you have a condition, like if you wanna use two columns, if you want to see all the firewalls that are in plan state, you can have a condition. You have, you could set it equal to firewall, you could set it equal to plan state, and you wrap it around the DF again and it should give you, oh, there's only one row, but it should give you um, the data for that. And if you want a control, it's if you want like a control F kind of thing um, in Jupyter Notebook, um, there is something called dot string dot contains. So if you, for example, if you want to know how many unique models there are um, in ISR, so in the type in in the column type, there's different models of ISRs. But if you want to know uh, the count of each different model of ISR, you can do a type df type dot string contains ISR, and you can wrap around. You have to wrap around with the df. But if you wrap around with the df, as we've seen earlier, it's going to give you a table, right? But we don't want a table this time. We want a total count. Um, after you get a table, we put it, we, we access the type column again, and then we do the value counts of that. And this should give us all the different kinds of, or all the different models of ISR that exist in that column. Next up is grouping. You can group two or more columns together. Um, in this case, I chose role and status. So each role, like patch panels, switches, routers, we have we have different kinds of roles. and for each role, there's different there's different statuses in different roles. Uh, in different, uh, sorry, there's different statuses. So, um, a firewall can be either active stage or a planned stage. Like there's many kinds of things. But if you want to see um, the number of devices in each state in each status for all the roles, you group the you group by by role, and then you you want the unique count of statuses. So you do statuses dot value counts, and then if you run it, it should give you a nice table. Um, so for each role you have, for, ac for access switch, you have eight devices that are in active stage, and then you have three in plan. So it gives you that kind of information if you use group by. Sorry? Yeah, sure, sure. Is this good? Uh, next up is visualizations. Um, so Pandas is built on a on a visualization library called Matplotlib. So actually, Pandas is built on two main libraries. One is NumPy and one is Matplotlib. NumPy is actually used for a lot of numerical data for statistical processing. Um, for my data set today, I was limited with I was limited with data. I didn't really have much numerical data to work with, um, but I did want to introduce you guys to this visualization library called Matplotlib. Um, so because pandas is built on top of that, you don't have to pip install that again. You just have to import it. So we do that. We import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And the first example is, um, let's say you want a bar graph of the count of type devices. Um, so as we did earlier, we get the value counts of device counts. And the way you draw a bar graph um, or, or the way you graph a bar graph is plt.bar. And this is the x-axis. 
that index and that values should give you the y-axis. And if we run this, we'll get a nice bar graph. But if you notice the x-axis, the labels of the x-axis is all messed up. You can fix that with Matplotlib. There's different functions that you can use to kind of make it better, to kind of make it look better. So PLT that x ticks, you can rotate the x ticks to 90 degrees so that it gives so that it rotates the labels. And then you can give it an x label, you could give it a y label, you could give this a graph a title. And at the end, if you just do a PLT that show and you run this, it should clean it up for you. And it looks much better now. Um, another advantage of Matplotlib is um, every visualization that you graph, you can just right click on it and you can either copy your image or you could save your image. And this is saved as a PNG file. So PNG image. So if, if you wanna quickly share it with your team, you can just right click on copy image and share it with, with them in their chat. Uh, the next, the last exercise that we have is pie chart. So if you just wanna see the distribution of different kinds of manufacturers or um, that exist in the data set, um, you could just get the value counts of manufacturers. And what you do is do, you do PLT that pie, and this is the values and this is the index. Um, for index, we, lab we do labels equals so that we see the labels are all around the pie chart. So you could see that Cisco has the highest distribution um, and so on and so forth. So you could see um, how Matplotlib does visualizations for you. So that ends our demo for today. Let me go back to my screen and, okay. That ends our demo. So what's next in it for you guys? I would suggest you guys should, uh, would go and install Jupyter Notebook, um, go to the demo netbox like I did and export a CSV file from there and start playing with pandas, not the animals. And here's the QR code, uh, my, my demo notebook and my presentation. Um, it's in this GitHub link, so you can scan this and you can access that. And I'll be happy to take any questions you have. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, I actually, before you, before you guys leave, um, I forgot to announce, there's a raffle for you guys. Um, I think there's uh, the raffle ticket is underneath your seat. So whoever is lucky enough, they can pick and choose whatever they want. Is that... Who's got it? You got it? Oh, you have a choice between an Echo and a Fire TV. You take the Fire TV? This is the Fire TV. Congratulations. I'll take the raffle ticket. Thank you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my God.